I had found a film that was labeled, um, it was labeled the films of Frank Gilbreth. And I just saw that it was these efficiency studies. And I did this by kind of trolling through uh, archive.org's list of archival films that they had. And I said, oh, this is interesting. And then I pitched a film about this guy who did efficiency studies, Frank Gilbreth. Um, unbeknownst to me, the uh, film strip was sort of insufficiently labeled because it had entirely omitted Lillian Gilbreth, who, as I found out later, was pretty much a 50-50 contributor to that work. Um, and then, of course, after that, I also learned the story of the family. So for me, it really started with that video. They would actually bend wire to make three-dimensional models of the path that they had recorded in the photograph. <laughs> so they'd make these little motion sculptures out of it that showed the exact path that somebody had made when they were doing a motion. <laughs> they developed their own symbolic language to record various movements called thurbligs which is their name backwards with a couple of the wow. characters transposed. You know, it would be like somebody reaches and then grasps for something and then searches for something. It would be like three symbols in a row, and that would be three third legs. This is the first time that I've, honestly, that I've edited, like, a conversation this way. Like, you know, just like where two people are talking and they're on two different cameras. Mm -hmm. Um so for me, it was primarily technical hang-ups. So it was like, uh, you know, the way we recorded it, we, for better or worse, we chose to record without headphones. So I had to worry about, like, overlapping audio. Um, there were a lot of spots where, you know, the tracks were synced typed slightly differently because of uh, the way that we filmed this. So I had to, like, adjust the syncing. Some of the commenters mentioned that it might have been easier to watch if the good cameras had been trained in our on our sight lines a little more because we were looking down at our laptops and kind of knew that was an issue going in, but just couldn't think of a better way to do it at the time. But I agree with that criticism. So, you know, just, just a million things like that. I think it's really important to do as much as you can yourself and to learn as many tools as possible. Uh, so, like, I started as a writer, and I, I, didn't, I didn't know anything. You know, I knew Photoshop and Illustrator, uh, and then I transitioned to the video team, and they originally thought that I would just be a script writer for a while and maybe try to learn some of the editing stuff. Uh, but I instantly thought that it was very important for me to learn uh, the other main tools, which are Premiere and After Effects, because we're like an all Adobe group. Uh, I thought it was very important to learn those as quickly as possible. And I think it's made me more valuable to the team. And I think it's also made me a better writer, just because I know exactly what is possible in both of those programs. And it's, secondhand for me to think that way. So that would be my advice.